This history burst focuses on a specific essay, in this case, about the Anglo-Saxon period being a golden age for England. One of the most important things you'll have to do in the exam, one of the highest marked questions, is responding to a statement in an essay. A typical example of this might be, to what extent is this statement true? Let's have a look at this example. This one's quite detailed because it's a practice run and it's important to practice with stuff that's more difficult than the things you'll be required to do in the exam. But it is also quite typical in its structure. Harriet Harvey Wood wrote a book called The Battle of Hastings, The Fall of Anglo-Saxon England, 2008. She argued that the late Anglo-Saxon period in England was wonderful and astonishing. How far do you agree with this statement? Explain your answer with evidence. Now, like all history answers, there should be a structure to your argument. I've colour coded them here so that you can see the way that they work. If you get a to what extent question, which will appear across various elements of the exam, you should have a main argument. You should have an opinion and you should be quite clear about that at the start of your essay. That bit's purple. It may only be two or three sentences, but it's critical to unlock the highest mark bands of the mark scheme. You then want to organise your answer around a series of topic sentences. They should relate back to the question. All the way through, the blue bits in this are about explaining your ideas, justifying and giving reasons for it. There should be a fair dotting of historical evidence through it, which is all symbolised by the green in this. Let's have a look at working through a waggle together. Your first job is to plan. You've had a good 10 minutes of information given to you at this point. At this point, it's worth pausing the video and thinking about, OK, based on what I've heard, was Anglo-Saxon England a golden age? You should have some evidence for golden age and you should have some evidence that it was an age of unfairness and challenges. Pause the video here and scribble yourself some rough notes to decide what you think. Then unpause the video and we'll carry on with the waggle. Now, let's have a look at the overarching structure. You've got the statement at the top, then in the purple, define your argument using words from the question and giving your opinion. I've then suggested some ideas you might include underneath. Reasons why it was wonderful and astonishing. Stability, the birth, the royal mint, etc. Literature, Sutton Who and works of art, women owning land. But then I think you've got to look at the other side of the essay. Why was life in Anglo-Saxon England not wonderful and astonishing? And here you might bring in the lives of the churls, the thralls and the way that slavery worked. You might look at the differences between men and women and how they were treated in society. And you might look at the idea of the Virgild and the value of life. Then you need a conclusion. What is your opinion on the question? Do you think that the author, Harriet Harvey Wood, was right or wrong to argue that Anglo-Saxon England was wonderful and astonishing? Now, we need to zoom in a little more closely onto this. So, back to our statement. I'm now going to give you some possible examples of an introduction. Remember, you should be defining your argument using words from the question and giving your opinion. Life in Anglo-Saxon England was wonderful and astonishing if you were rich and high in the hierarchy. For many people it was stable, but tough, particularly for women or the lowest status people in society. Option two. Life in Anglo-Saxon England was safe and secure for many people. For the rich and for some it produced great art and culture, but this was not widespread. Or a third possible interpretation. Life in Anglo-Saxon England produced wonderful and astonishing art, but socially it was tightly hierarchical and controlled. Notice across all three of them, I've tried to give you a flavour of what my opinion is and the different things that I might think so that my essay has a line of argument rather than just being a lump of stuff I know. Now, let's try to break that down. I'm going to choose one of the introductions. You can see it on screen. Life in Anglo-Saxon England was safe and secure for many people. For the rich and for some, it produced great art and culture, but this was not widespread. I want to now follow my own structure and build up a paragraph. Life in Anglo-Saxon England provided safety for many people. The kingdom had only existed in a unified form for a hundred years, and so people have memories of Viking invasions and threats. Dead simple. It proves that life in England was safe and secure. It references some historical evidence. It gives you a reason. Again, the system of burrs, which were fortified towns, allowed them to feel secure and to build an organised society. The Royal Mint ensured a consistent system of coinage, and so they were able to be economically secure. As a result, Anglo-Saxon England could be described as wonderful, because it made life safe and secure for many people. 
And you can see from the colour coding that I go piece of evidence, explanation, piece of evidence, explanation. And I repeat that for as much as I know. Let's have a look at how that might expand further on the screen. Now you can see the bit that we've just read, plus one more. Life in Anglo-Saxon England was not wonderful and astonishing for those of low social status. Thralls made up approximately 10% of society and were slaves who were treated as property. In some respects, they were treated like animals as they could be branded or castrated. Some were prisoners of war or criminals. Others were sold into slavery. Children of thralls became thralls themselves. This was a system which could not be described as wonderful because it had such a profound impact on this section of society and they were unable to alter their social standing. Now, you've seen two examples. Here's where you pause the video and you try it yourself. On the screen, you should be able to see the whole structure for the essay and therefore you should be able to work your way through some of the ideas we've seen in the video, building them up into paragraphs. Remember to show your teacher when you're done.